Okay, people, so it's actually raining a little bit, so I'm switching to more simple mode. I'm just putting my ultra wide lens on the camera, and yeah, then we can also see a little bit more of the landscapes. And what we've got there, there's a moose track heading down to the swamp to get a drink or to feed. The moose will eat a lot of the aquatic plants in the summertime. Part of the reason for the moose eating these aquatic plants is that they're high in sodium and so it replenishes the salt uh, for the moose. You hear that? There it is. It's a red-tailed hawk. And there's its mate way up there. Okay, so small update. I think we are now walking for about an hour. I have absolutely no idea where I am, so I hope Frank uh, stays with me, so I will find my way home. Because yeah, I think we are just somewhere in the nature, just me, Frank, Karma, uh, bears and coyotes. One of the things when you've got your bear spray with you, you need to be able to get it out and deploy it in under two seconds. Just to give you an idea, up ahead there, if a bear were to come over the rise there and charge us, in less than two seconds he would be on us. So huh. you, you really need to be able to get that bear spray out right away. So like in the old movies you need to practice on... <laughs> the quick draw, that's right. But on the upside, bear attacks are a very rare occurrence. But when they do happen, they can be extremely frightening for you, not so much for the bear. And uh, sometimes they're fatal. Just uh, last week there was a, a man uh, attacked by a grizzly bear north of Prince George. Thing bit into his shoulder and threw him apparently three meters through the air. That's a powerful animal. And he was lucky, he, he survived uh, the encounter. And when you go in through something like that, you get physical scars, but quite often you get emotional scars too. You know, you're always going to be looking over your shoulder after something like that happens. But fortunately, the bears around Merritt are fairly well behaved, so we should be good. Really fresh deer track there. You see how well defined that is? So that means that the rain hasn't been hitting it for very long. In another, say another day, that would be washed out. No bears. Let's check out the house for the woodpeckers. So this, the woodpecker that's been doing this, this is our largest woodpecker. It's a pileated woodpecker. And you can tell it's a pileated because they do the rectangular type holes. And you see how deep that is? It takes a bird with a really big bill to get in that deep. And he's digging for ants and other insects. I think that's worth a treat. I think you deserve a treat. It's been a while. Good girl. Bear claws on there. Not a very big bear. Okay, so Frank will take a picture for me. Yeah, I got some good, good stuff there. Nice. Because yeah, my uh, ultra wide angle lens is probably not good for catching the bird in the sky. I hope you can hear him. When he flies, it'll be the perfect shot. This might work out after all. Those are moose
Okay people, so the rain stopped a little bit and it's nice weather and we are like in a really big open field So I think it's time to send up the drone and get some nice aerial shots Okay people, so the adventure is coming to an end here, uh, we'll just walk back to the car and then we'll ask Frank a couple of questions about Frank and about surviving in the wild. So Frank, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, <laughs> what is the short version of your life? Short version, I was raised up in Wells Gray Park, one of the largest provincial parks we've got, uh, raised in the wilds there moved to Kamloops, spent all, all of the time I could out in the bush, and uh, yeah, it's been been good. I try to hike every day, so I spend a bit of time out here. Nice. Anything else? Uh, did I... must have missed a couple points. <laughs> Few moments in life. So what would be an interesting story, like a crazy uh, wildlife adventure? Uh, <laughs> I, those are really hard uh, questions to answer because to me, like I don't like to focus on, everybody wants to hear, how many times have you been chased by a bear? How, you know, has this happened to you? To me, that's not the important stuff. The important stuff is the times we go out and we find cool stuff. Like this morning, finding that little nest of eggs there. What are the chances that us walking across there, we're going to come across? those little eggs hidden under the grass you know th that to me that's the important stuff when you're out in the the wilds not the time the bear chased you or the moose chased you just a little moments yeah, yeah a little moments how do you know all like the wildlife things did you grow up with this uh, is it running in your blood uh, yeah, my father is a professional wildlife biologist. He's 94 now and still gets out there and he taught me a, a lot. And I've got lots of friends that are naturalists. I read a lot, but the big thing is, is you spend time in the outdoors and you have a curious mind. And so you'll see something and you'll say, I wonder why this is like this. And then you'll go home and you'll research it. In the old days, it'd be you'd get a book and read it. Nowadays, you can go on the internet, read a bunch of misinformation, but eventually you'll find the truth out there. And again, if I've got a picture of a bug or a plant that I don't know, I've got lots of friends that know, so I send it off to them. And I build my knowledge base that way. And do you, do you have a favorite spot in Canada that you like to go back to? Uh, I'd say Canada is my favorite spot. <laughs> uh, we've been all across Canada from BC out to Newfoundland and back. I've been in all of the provinces and territories except for none of it. And all of the country is beautiful. And every place has its uh, gems. And now that we're in Merritt, Man, that's got some incredible hiking opportunities here in the grasslands or up on the alpine areas just a short distance from town. You know, you're never going to run out of places to explore. And you don't have to travel around the world for a vacation. Lots of stuff to see right here in, in Merritt. 
Yeah, I'm surprised there is endless possibilities of discovering new things in a 15 minute drive. Oh yeah, it's it's amazing. And you know, if you take the time to look at the small things, you know, not just, oh, I didn't see any big animals today, but seeing the little things like the chipmunks and the marmots and the, there are alligator lizards here. And I, a lot of people don't know about those. All different types of snakes here. So there's always something to find. What would you tell to my generation who doesn't really know a lot about wildlife? How can you make them go outside and do the same thing? Like just learn, read a little bit and go discover. Yeah, and I mean, I, I don't think it's just a generational thing. I think it's that everybody's moved into the city and they're spending too much time in the city. It's time to unplug and go out. I know um, my children, I drag them out into the outdoors every time I, I can. And they, I, I think they really appreciate it now. We've been on some great adventures together. But the big thing is, is just to make that, that effort to get out there and, you know, start small. You don't have to start on a 10 day expedition into the back country, you know, just take that uh, hour drive from town and go for a hike and the next time longer hike longer hike and start doing some overnight stuff but I tell you you come back from a, a day in nature and you feel you feel refreshed oh so I yeah one thing uh, let's say I don't know anything and I want to go on a hike uh, and I'm in British Columbia what are some of the main survival tips not to die <laughs> not to die well let's see what do you want to do you want to know first thing you want to do whenever you go on a hike is let people know where you're going and when you're when you'll be back we've got really good search and rescue uh, groups throughout the province and if you do screw up and you get lost and you think you're going to die just stay where you are search and rescue will come and find you and and save you but if nobody knows where you went they'll never find you because where where did Stepan go did he go that way that way that way nobody knows so you leave a plan that's the big thing the other thing always stress for the weather you see I've got my jacket uh, with me even though it was pretty nice when we started out but you always have all the gear you need I carry enough stuff with me that I can survive for maybe two or three months. Huh. And, uh, you know, as long as you got uh, a knife and matches and some type of shelter, a bit of food with you, you're going to be fine. And I mean, the province isn't that large that people aren't going to find you. So that's what you, you work on the idea that you just have to survive, you know, that first night and search party is going to find you as long as you stay still don't go running around in circles because then the it's harder to find you when you know you're lost stay where you are you know if you can get out into an opening so you can wave to the helicopter as it comes by that's important too how would you deal with the most common scary animals around this neighborhood like if you don't have for example the bear spray uh, let's say you have one pocket knife and and a camera uh, take a picture and then <laughs> and then you're done it, 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 that's the thing is there's no reason not to have bear spray with you and bear spray works on bears works on cougars it works on wolves it'll work on a mad moose all of those things if as long as you've got your bear spray with you so it's it costs about forty dollars for the bear spray another sixteen dollars for a holster and then you want a canister that's maybe fifteen bucks so it's a good cheap. price for one life for, yeah and uh, it's really important that you know how to use it but the the big thing about wildlife if you don't want to get attacked by wildlife like when we were hiking today I was saying there's a bear track and there's where bears turned over a rock so I'm always looking I know where the animals are around us so that's important. Know your surrounding. Don't have your head down listening to Puff Daddy or whoever as you're walking through the bush. Listen. Know where stuff is. And if you see a bear, don't walk up to the bear. Stop. Let the bear walk off his way. He doesn't want anything to do with you. 
but if you walk into the bear he's going to get mad and bite you uh, same thing with moose and deer when they've got their little ones they're going to protect them so if you see animals give them lots of room that's the big thing give people or give wildlife lots of room won't be a problem very good life lessons okay i think i this was all my questions i don't know if you have a final message or if we should just go home i do look there's blue sky over there we should go over where the blue sky is get some more pictures but uh i guess the last thing i'd leave people with is you know get outdoors put on your hiking boots go for a walk doesn't have to be a long walk but uh, get out there and enjoy the outdoors. The more people we have enjoying the outdoors, the better chance we have of protecting it. Nice. There you go. Okay, people, so oh, let's <laughs> finish the video. So this was uh, the wildlife video with Frank Rizzi. Is this how you pronounce yes, Rizzi? That... Uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, I will put some information of Frank in the description if you want to know more. And anyways, don't forget to hit the like button. If you like these videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell button. And see you next time. <laughs> oh, moose poop. <laughs> <laughs>